YouTube boss it going the goat house is back with my interior defensive line rankings for the NFL draft and I love this group some of my favorite players in the entire draft are in this class right here I wish I could say the same about the edge rushers we'll rank those guys next uh, but yeah no elite guys in this category but one guy really close and a bunch of guys that I think people are sleeping on some solid players we're doing this for every position Full NFL draft coverage, winners and losers grades throughout the draft, live stream day one. So hopefully you join us, join us on Twitter as well. Number one defensive tackle, Byron Murphy the second. Been one of my favorite players in this draft. I was high on him, you know, pretty early on, and that hasn't changed. Really, the only thing against him is he's a little undersized. You wish he was a little lengthier. I'm not really too worried about the length, uh, but you wish he's a little taller and a little bit had a little bit more weight to him but he plays with so much power a lot more strength than you would think based on the, uh, the size the measurables I suppose um, very powerful very explosive off the ball uh, the balance you know stands out body control really stands out thought he played a great game against Washington thought he really stood out just shedding blocks uh, getting in the backfield making you know filling gaps making plays so you know one of the maybe the biggest game of the year for him in Texas too so good to show up at, at that moment freak athlete so he tested I knew he would test pretty well but he tested extremely well just an absolute freak athlete uh, obviously a B gap player gonna play D tackle can play three technique but he has reps in the A gap as well uh, so I like that like that he's not stuck in one spot you know, I wouldn't imagine he lines up at nose tackle a ton in the NFL, but he could do it. He has the power. He has the experience. Uh, I think we'd be talking about him as an elite prospect, like actually at the top of the NFL draft, you know, not number one, but up there if he just had a little bit more size because the tape is that good and he has that much to his game. Almost complete, just lacking a little bit a little bit of size, but, you know, not so much the length for me. Just I wish he was, you know, in terms of arm length. I wish he was a little taller but a little bit more weight. Like if he was weighing around 310, 315, I really think we'll be talking about him up there, but it doesn't change the tape. You know, there's a reason for that. The tape is there. Like he is very, very solid player. So that's really the only knock for him. Uh, one of my favorite defensive players in the draft. It's going to be between him, believe it or not, him and uh, one of the top corners for my top defensive player uh, in the draft. Uh, but I think those guys would be ahead of the edge rushers for me. But um yeah, love me some Byron Murphy, one of my favorite players in the class, and I'm going to be saying that a lot throughout this video. Then you got Jerzon Newton, or Johnny Newton from Illinois. Super flashy, especially in the passing game. He knows how to get after the quarterback, and that's kind of what stands out in today's NFL. It's a passing league. He's going to get production getting after the quarterback. He did have that at Illinois. Um, pretty solid athlete as well. He has pass rush moves. You know, he's Again, he's going to get after the quarterback. Um, where is he going to align? You know, he's going to play a lot of three technique. You know, he, I mean, he can play D tackle. We're not going to see him at nose tackle, really. He can play that 3 4 end spot if a 3 4 team drafts him. But yeah, so a little bit more of a step outside than a guy like Byron Murphy. So, you know, all these guys are interior defense linemen, but if we split them up on their specific alignment, you know, he would be one. He would be one in that group because he's a little different than Byron Murphy. Um, but super high motor, you know, really fun. The way he gets in the backfield, the way he gets after the quarterback, and sometimes he'll just be getting back there as fast as he can, and he'll end up stopping a run, you know, blowing up a, a run play, a handoff back there when maybe he was planning on rushing the quarterback. Um but yeah, again, I think you play D tackle, D N three techniques, so teams could use them in different ways. Um, super strong hands. Uh, uh, yeah, again, I think he has different ways to win, different ways to get in the backfield. He plays pretty tight though. Plays pretty stiff. I noticed that quite a bit. Not a lot of flexibility to his game. Um, doesn't really change. You know, it doesn't really stop him from getting the job done though. Slightly undersized, not not too much of a big deal for me, but that seems to be a little bit of a knock. Again, you can see him playing a little bit more outside than your traditional D tackle, so uh, the undersized part's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, at first, he could kind of be used on passing downs, like a guy, a rotational guy. I mean, if you're drafting the first round, you want him to start, obviously, and he's solid stopping a run, but a lot of times it's like I think his plan is let me just rush the passer, even on running downs, and sometimes it kind of worked out because he blew up the play just by getting back there. Will that work as much in the NFL? You know, no. So he has to have a little bit more of a plan, maybe a little bit more instinctive, understanding run versus pass. Um, he is mainly a, a pass rusher, but again, can stop the run. Um, you know, not saying he can't do that. He's actually pretty decent at doing it, but um, 
teams right away. Like coming in the NFL, they might have better players uh, with reading the run at first, so he could be used on passing. That could be. It depends on where he gets drafted there. Um, but I have him number two. I think the difference, again, different players to me, Byron Murphy and Jerzon Newton. But Murphy plays with a lot more control, a, a lot more power, actually, a little more consistent reading run and pass, uh, and a little bit more balance, I'd say. You know, not just with his body control, but with, yeah, against the run and the pass. So Newton probably had more sacks than Murphy uh, in the NFL. You could argue that, but it's really not all about that. Uh, and this is where it gets a little tricky because Devondre Sweat messed up big time. Uh, that was yesterday. So what was that? The seventh? We have it there. Um, on the seventh, just yesterday. You know. Not too long in the draft. He got arrested for a DUI, DWI, whatever they consider it there. Um, and obviously that's not good no matter who you are, what time of the year it is, you know. But it's really not good at this time of the year for Tavondre Sweat uh, because, yeah, he's that close to getting drafted. But it, it's more the issue is more so not that he – I mean, it's an issue that he got arrested, but – um, people, you know, will be like, this guy's an idiot. Like he, the team teams will say that, like, not like you gotta be like, you're dumb. If you get in trouble like that, and, you know, no matter who you are, but to, at this time, like your focus is not fully on being an NFL player is what it shows. So some teams might completely scratch him off their board and I can understand that. Um, you know, it kind of says something about his character maybe. So it, it's, it, I was actually about to have him at number two. I'm a huge Tavondre sweat fan. Huge fan. Uh, I bumped him down one spot. Even though he's a, it's hard to compare. He's, he's a different player than the other two. He played with Byron Murphy. Um, but that's tough. Uh, so there's teams that are going to scratch him off their board. He is not going to go in the first round. I'm having a tough time where I, I like my grade. But I, I, I am a huge fan of his game. If you've been watching me, how I evaluate players and current NFL players, you know, when I rank players, if you've been watching, you know I'm a big fan of those defenders that create for their teammates and that this is the guy of this draft class on the defensive side of the ball that creates for his teammates um, such a unique player, you know, for that reason. And because of his size, how big is elite power, um, you know, tough to budge, tough to move. Um, you know, you have to double team him. He's got, you know, you think of him like that big, like as an a gap player, that's a nose tackle, but he had a lot of reps in the B gap and he was pretty solid there. He's he's actually quick for his size, pretty solid mover for his size. Um, you know, he he can move. He can get after the quarterback. I think he's very underrated in that category. But it just feels like he swallows the blockers. Like they have to double team him. It's just they all kind of come to him. Uh, and that just opens things up for his teammates, the defensive lineman next to him. But it kind of gives more space to the linebackers as well. So that's where he kind of creates. You're gonna have to double him, even in the NFL. Like. Just that too. He's just too powerful, too big of a dude, um, and and he moves well for that size. You know, if he didn't move that well for his size, then he probably wouldn't be as much of a threat. Um, you know, so already Paul stopping to run. I, I, again, I think he has a lot of upside as a pass rusher. I think he's actually very underrated in that category. It's a guy that again, again and again, he's gonna create for his teammates because how much of a big body threat, you know, power he is in there. Um, so he's going to make a big impact. That's kind of, you know, a lot of people look at production. He's not going to get nearly as much production as the other two guys we talked about, but he's going to create so much. He's going to make so much more of an impact by creating for his teammates. But yeah, that arrest is tough. It, you know, would you take him in the first round? I think he's a first round talent all day. And that's bold because even before the arrest, people haven't said that. I just, I think he's that good of a football player. I really do. It's, it's rare that we see guys this big make that much of an impact and move the way he does. You know, Jordan Davis was a, a you know more athletic mover, and he went super high for a reason. Um, you know, so I guess you could put him somewhere in that category. He's not quite Jordan Davis, but it's a guy I would want to work with. But now we have the issue with the arrest. Uh, I mean, he's you, perfect world. You wish you would kind of cut down the weight, stay in a little bit more in shape. But I think he plays with this weight uh, pretty well, and he's never going to win. Again, I think he moves well for his size, but he's never going to win because of pure athleticism or quickness or speed. I don't think it's that much of a, of a knock. Um, you won't get a ton of production, but that's because he's creating. So I uh, I love this guy's game. I, I would I was grading him as a first-round talent, and I still am. We put round one there. But, yeah, I wouldn't take him in round one because, you know, not smart, but other teams aren't going to do it. Teams aren't – scratch him off the board, so I would wait. I would play – I'd strategic. 
Um, it's a guy that I would still consider taking. I would wait a little bit. I'm very curious to see who's going to steal him, where he's going to land. Um, but he's got to stay. You got to figure it out. You know, he's got to figure it out. But, um, you know, it, it's it's something. You know, sometimes those guys get in trouble in that category. Like they drink a little too much. You know, and, and you know, people. You know, a lot of people in this world have done it, and they've kind of learned from that. Like, all right, I can't do that again. And so it could be one of those situations. There's other you know, situations where the guys just can't stay out of trouble. It doesn't really feel like that, uh, but I'm not really the expert in that field. I, I love Tavondre Sweat's game. Another guy that I'm a huge fan of that I'm going to be higher on than other people is Brandon Dorless uh, from Oregon. And some people may grade him or rank him with the edge rushers. I like him interior for sure. He actually put on weight going into the combine. He was uh, around 270, 272, I want to say. At Oregon, he's 283 at the combine. So I, I, he put on weight, and he's a better interior player, but he's this is one of the more versatile pieces of of the draft, really, but especially the defensive lineman because he can play all over the D-line. But, um, again, I like him a little bit more on the inside. I'm going to grade him as round two, and you kind of been hearing about him round four, maybe round three. I don't see him getting out of round three, but I, I, I consider him a round two but extremely versatile. And that could be an issue for some teams. He's kind of considered a tweener. Like, where do we put him? And sometimes those guys in the NFL, like guys are really flashy, really good, but they're tweeners. Where do we put them? They don't end up working out too well because teams really don't know where to put them. But I, I think some teams may think that with him. I just don't see it because when he lines up inside, he is too damn quick, too damn smooth, you know, has that finesse, those moves for the guards. Like, he's too quick for the guards. And when you put him against the tackles, whether it's over the tackle or outside, uh, it just feels like he's too strong. He's got powerful hands. So he, to me, may seem like a tweener to some, but he just seems like a mismatch guy wherever you put him. So that's what, that's what I absolutely love about him. I think he's super instinctive. I haven't really heard anybody say that either. Um, he's a pass deflection machine. I think he, him and Sweat, lead this class with pass deflections from the defensive line. And I think that kind of goes in with being instinctive, knowing when to sit and read the quarterback and that, hey, I can sit and read and get my hands in the ball here. Uh, but also reading run and reading pass, um, you know, again, I, I've seen him correctly read the run exactly where the run is going, holding off on just going straight for the quarterback. Um, I've seen him pull and get outside because he knows it's an outside run. So I, that's somewhere where, somewhere where he's underrated. Um, we talked about he's got powerful hands. He's got rush moves. I specifically like the spin move from the inside. It's just too much. It's too quick for the guards. He, he gets after the quarterback in multiple different ways. Um, he was fun to watch. So I'm surprised people aren't talking about him more big fan against there's some teams that won't have a position. They love for him. Like it's like this guy could play here and there. But again, if he goes to a three, four team, he's going to play. DN, I think he could play D tackle for a four three team, uh, you know, or, or he can play. I would like for him to land on a four three team because you can at times you can line him up over the guard, you can line him up at three technique, you can line him up over the tackle, you can have a lot of fun depending on the situation uh, that your team is in, uh, you know, down a distance, obviously, situation of the game. So um, I, I think this is more of like a weapon, like a mismatch type player than than a tweener. I, that is the way that I would explain him. Um, he's more of a disruptor than a tackler. I guess he can finish a little bit better. Um, you know, he's going to, I think another guy where he disrupts crates for his teammates, but I think he'd be pretty productive at the next level. So big fan of Dorless. Another guy that every time I watch him, he's growing on me more and more is Michael Hall Jr. I'm going to put him at five. I you know he's kind of being talked about in the third round, maybe sneaks in the second. I like him firmly as a second round player, but I understand that, you know, a little bit light because he is an interior player. Like he is a defensive tackle. He, you know, he's good over the guard. And I think with his athleticism and his ability to get after the quarterback, I think you could play him at three technique as well. But based on his size and his movement, and he's not super, super powerful, but I think he's more powerful than the weight will show. I think this is your day two Byron Murphy right here. Uh, but teams might go, ah, maybe want to put him outside, but I don't know. He's so, he's so good inside. He's another guy that's too quick for guards. He's got some legit moves. He's he's so twit like lateral movement, and he's so twitchy. It all it happens so fast that he just gets by the guards. He's just kind of just a problem for them. Um, I, I thought he got you know the stats will show you know underwhelming I suppose, but I thought he he had a lot more backfield production than like actual box score production. Like he got in the backfield, he disrupted plays because he's such a quick mover. 
Uh, and that kind of showed, like, those moves showed up again at the Senior Bowl. Like, going against different competition, you're going on one-on-ones, and it's like, man, this guy's just too quick. He, he almost moves like an edge rusher, but he plays the interior. Um, he's only 20 years old, too, so I, I think he has a ton of upside. He's going to be way more productive at the next level. He's growing on me more and more. Um, I end up bumping him up over Bra- uh, Braden Fisk. You know, and I, you know, it's close with Dorless, but I like Dorless a lot as well. Uh, these are unique players, and he's lengthy. You know, he uses that length very well. Um, he is a little undersized for the interior, which was a little more weight, I guess, a little bit more power. Uh, and a guy that I definitely can see a team can draft him, and maybe he won't start the game. Maybe he won't be on the field on first downs. He'll be on the field in the you know and the passing situations and long situations um, because he is a he is better against the pass and the run. Um, you know, and he's just. I guess not super powerful, which kind of uh, makes teams write him off again, possibly against the run right away. Even though he's not bad against the run, uh, you know, he, I feel like he should have had more production. He could finish a little bit better, but again, he gets in the backfield more than the stats show. I like his game a lot. Uh, very athletic, quick mover. Um, more production coming in the NFL, I believe. So I really like him uh, on day two and. The next group of guys, again, I love this group. Braden Fisk, I think most people have him in the top five. It's tough not putting him in there uh, because he's he's super explosive off the ball. Like, he f- moves off the ball, explodes off the ball, uh, and he wins reps because of that. And I, you know, I, I do like when defensive linemen have that quick of a get-off uh, because you can't really coach that. Uh, High-motor guy, you know, he'll, he'll blow up plays, um, very flashy at times. Uh, but yeah, you, you wish he was a little lengthier. He has the height. You wish he was a little lengthier. Um, sometimes, you know, when he, he really has no chance to get off the double teams, he struggles a little bit to get off the blocks in general. Um, like once some, once someone's locked in, like it's tough for him to get off it, but he's so explosive, makes, makes big time plays in the backfield. Uh, Mason Smith's another one of my favorite guys, this group. I'm Pretty close to putting him at six, but he's all upside. Like top recruit coming into LSU, he had the flashes here and there. He has the elite physical, elite physical traits like the length. The length is crazy. The size is crazy. The power, um, you know, he has so much upside if he stays on the field. Had some injuries in the past. Like it's a guy you want to work with. Like good athleticism for those freaky physical traits. Lengthy, you know, uh, elite length. Uh, the McNeese State game was ridiculous but I mean you know wish that that's the weaker competition wish that showed up a little bit more against a stronger competition but this is a guy again has so much upside he definitely should have a better NFL career than he did in college as long as he sticks on the field so this guy a couple years ago was supposed to be like a top pick like he was supposed to be maybe the top defensive player in this draft so could he get there could he get there uh, with with more coaching and reps in the NFL, Chris Jenkins from Michigan. I think he's pretty balanced. Like he's solid again. He's not super flashy, but he's solid against the pass, solid against the run. Pretty physical. Uh, I think it's a pretty safe pick around you know late two, probably early three, but late two. Rook Ororo um, from Clemson. He definitely looks the part. You know, physical dude, super athletic. Tested well at the combine. Um, it's a guy you want to work with. You know, once again. Um, I think needs to be coached up a little bit more. Something I've noticed about some of these Clemson defenders, like they're good, freak athlete, good length, high upside, but you, you want a little bit more. You're left wanting a little bit more, maybe a little bit more pass rush moves to his game. Um, but a guy that could go in round two probably goes in round three. And then then there's a little bit of a drop off, but I do love some of these next guys. Makai Wingo from LSU, another LSU guy. Uh, he's definitely undersized, definitely undersized, but – High motor guy, really explosive, quick, twitchy get off. Um, he gets production. He gets after the quarterback. Florida State game to start the year was unreal. So he was kind of any everyone's radar at that game. After that game, with that game, um, just a little undersized, you know. So that's the only thing with him. Right after him, right with them is Dwayne Carter from Duke. Uh, pretty fun to watch. Another high motor guy. He lined up everywhere. He lined up, you know, not just D tackle, but I like seeing him line up at nose. Played pretty well there. He's not really going to play there a ton uh, at the NFL, but he lined up outside as well. Duke's D-line was pretty good, um, so he's fun. And then some sleepers that are probably right there next in the rankings. I'm surprised there's not enough talk about Jaden Crumity from Mississippi State. I'm surprised because his tape was good. Uh, I thought he played very well against LSU getting after Jaden Daniels. Um, this guy's big with length, pretty explosive. He gets backfield production. He gets after the quarterback. 
Um, I'm trying to figure out when I'm missing on him. I like him a lot. Could be a steal. Marcus Harris from Auburn. I guess he's a little undersized, maybe with the length. He's pretty thick, though, like muscular build. So I'm really not really with the power. Um, good interior play, player. I think where he stands out is he sheds blocks so well. Like, he's not going to beat the blocker right off the snap like a uh, Wingo or a Braden Fist kind of wins off that. Um, you know, Michael Hall Jr. Those guys win because they're, they're pre-block movement. Um, Harris is really good shedding the block. You know, like one, he's going to get blocked, but he's really good with his moves, ripping him off him, um, and then gets in the, you know, fills the gap, fills the lane, makes the tackle uh, in the run game. So he's pretty consistent with that. He's a little undersized. He's not going to be flying in the backfield a ton. So that's kind of why he's down here, but he's really consistent, really good in that category. So I'm surprised he's not talked about a little bit more. And then Valdarius Payne from Virginia Tech. I uh, understand why he's not talked about a ton because I guess he didn't start a ton of game for Virginia Tech, for, for VTech, but they played him. Obviously, they liked him, but he's a freak athlete. He's a little undersized uh, for the interior, but he's high motor, explosive off the ball. He is a freak athlete, so I think he can be more productive in the NFL. It's just, yeah, he's kind of an interior player that, you know, it has the size of like a defensive end, you know, the weight, I guess, of a defensive end, but he has the athleticism as a defensive end as well. So three technique possibly, um, but he's fun because how explosive he is. So uh, I like this group. I like the guys at the top, a couple first round players. Is a troublemaker that is a first round player all day, in my opinion. I would have him ranked number two, but um, Sweat had to go get arrest, arrested. But those round two guys, man, Dorless, Hall Jr., they're kind of getting round three love right now. They're getting love, but it's like round three, round four. I think they need round two love. Mason Smith's right there, too. I wouldn't be, uh, you know, against going to get him late, too, actually, um, because he, he has what you want to work with. He has it in him. Got to stay on the field. So. Big, big fan of this group. Some of my favorite players in this draft are from this group. I don't love the edge group. We do have some guys we like in the first round. We do have some sleepers. We'll get to that video next. It is a little disappointing, though. But um, And then we have linebackers, corner safeties. And then we get on to the finishing touches of our pre-draft content with more mocks uh, and a lot more to cover. Uh, hopefully you join us for, for all of our content here and on Twitter. Code GOAT on GLD Shop and Liquid IV for a uh, percentage off. That is going to do it for this one. Let me know your rankings in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.